Hi, my name is Hector Garcia, and I want to show you how to clean up an item list in Excel that we're later on going to import it into QuickBooks. This is going to be a lot more Excel type of work than actual QuickBooks, uh, but uh, the two things go hand in hand. So the first thing we're looking at in the screen is a typical item list. Uh, we have things like an item code, product category, color, size, and additional attributes, cost and sales price. So the typical scenario that I have is a client will ask me to take this item list from the vendor and clean it up or put it together in a way that is meaningful to the business that is going to uh, use this in QuickBooks. Uh, one of the typical examples is, for example, taking descriptions such as category, color, size, finish, etc., and concatenating or joining the entire description in a single description. So I'll go ahead and show you how that works. So the first thing is I'll do is I'll insert a column here. So I'm going to insert a column right here. And then I'm going to start up with a formula uh, that is going to concatenate or is going to join the information coming from all these columns that you see here. So I'm going to start with equals concatenate. And the syntax, basically I have to choose each cell, put a comma, the next cell, comma, the next cell, comma, next cell, comma, next cell, and that would be it. Close parentheses, press enter. The problem with this is that there's no spaces, no hyphens, nothing between it, they're just all joined together. So what I may want to do is insert maybe a hyphen in between the descriptions. So let's go ahead and change that. So in order to do that, in between each of the cells that I'm putting together, I have to insert another cell with the text. So for example, let me go ahead and delete this. So the first one is C2, which is right here. Then in between C2, and D2, I want to put, let's say, a space, hyphen, and then a space. So I'm going to put open quotes, which means it's going to be just text. I'll put space, hyphen, space, close parentheses, then I'll put a comma, and then I'll try the next cell. Let's just see what this will look like. This little tiny space that I see here, this little tiny uh, space, hyphen, space, this is what I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and follow through and finish the formula exactly like that. So the next one's going to be quote, space, hyphen, space, quote, comma, the next cell, and then comma, quote, space, hyphen, quote, comma, and the very last cell, which is the additional description. Oh, there's one more. Quote, space, hyphen, quote, and then the very last piece of the description. So now, now that you see them all put together, this is now ready to be my full description. So I'm going to go ahead and double click the little black box under the cell, which basically will duplicate all the formulas. And this is exactly the description that I want to bring into QuickBooks. So I'm going to put it here in the header, I'll put description. Okay, let's say, let's do another example. Let's say, for example, that for the item code, I want to add the letters C-A-N in front of every one of these numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this column here. I'm going to insert a column. And then I'll use the same formula. I'll put equals concatenate. And then on the very, very first piece, I want to tell it that I want to see, in this case, the letters C-A-N. So I'll put quote C-A-N, close quotes, and then comma, and then the target cell, I'll close parentheses. And now this is going to be, let's say, my item name. And then I'll copy this down. There we go. So these are going to be my inventory item codes in QuickBooks. These are going to be my descriptions. And let's say these here are going to be my 
manufacturer's part number. So I'll just change the title there. Now the rest of these columns, I don't need anymore, right? So because I already concatenated them into the other one. So I'll just go ahead and hide these for a second just to make it easier to read. Perfect. So now I got my manufacturer's part number. I have my item name. I have my description. I have my cost and I have my sales price. Go ahead and save this for a second just to kind of show you the sequence of events that are going to happen in QuickBooks after the fact. So I'm going to go ahead and open QuickBooks. And just to show you, I have an empty item list here. I'm going to go to File, Utilities, Import, Excel Files. Then on the left side, I kind of have a simple type of import. And then on the right side, I have the advanced. So I'm going to go ahead and go to advanced import. Then I'm going to select the Excel file that I want to import. So I'll click on browse. Now I'll go find my Excel file. Then when it's finished loading, it's going to ask me which, which sheet, right? Because there, there could be multiple sheets. So I'll choose the actual sheet that I was working on. And then I have to create mapping. So this is where I go here to choose mapping and then I'll click on add new. And this is where I tell QuickBooks uh, the type of data that I'm going to import. So in this case, it would just be an item. And now I have to tell it what type of item, the name, all this information. So right now I don't have type. I haven't set this up yet. So this is something that I have to do afterwards. But for the time being, let's set up what we have. So we have the item name. Now we have our sales description. And let's assume that's also our purchase description. So we'll go ahead and select the same description per, for purchase description. Then my income account or my expense account or my asset account, I don't have those yet. So we're going to set those up in a second. On hand, I don't have any of that information for now. Cost, I do have that. So I have to put that in there. So I'll put cost. And then we'll go down here to price, price amount, and I'll go to sales price. Now I'm not ready to import as of now. So um, even if I were to hit save and try to import, it wouldn't work because I do have to select the default uh, income account and the default expense account and so forth. But I could at least finish this. I'll hit save. I'll, let's give this a name. So we'll call it item import something like that. That way it saves the template of what we have so, so far. Now it doesn't let me save until I actually have a, a type. So I'll just select anything at random here, but I have to go back and change it afterwards. So I hit save. Um, and then when I hit preview, it will kind of tell me the type of information that um, that is going to be imported. So it gives you sort of a quick preview. I had to close the original Excel file. So I'm going to click on preview. And then if there's any errors, which in this case, there is an error because we don't have a valid item type in this case. So we have to go back in that spreadsheet and add an item type in there. So we'll go ahead and hit cancel and go back into Excel. And let's add the additional line items that we were missing there. So let's open up this. So what I need to now add is an income account, an expense account, and an inventory account. So let's put here income account let's go to in this case cost account and inventory account and just to simplify things let's say my income account is going to be sales my cost of goods sold account would just be an account called cost of goods sold and my inventory asset account is going to be called inventory asset. Okay, so I'll go ahead and copy those also. And the last piece of information we were missing was the type. So we're going to call it here item type. And let's say these are all going to be inventory parts. So we'll just put here inventory part. We have to actually spell out the word inventory part, the two words for it to work. And actually, this should be good to go for now. So I'm going to go ahead and save it and close it. Go back into QuickBooks, File, Utilities, Import Excel Files. 
I'll click on advanced import. Now, because we already started the process, it, it already knows which Excel file we're supposed to be working on, the correct sheet, and the, imp the mapping template. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and edit it. And I'll select my mapping template I already saved from before, item import. And now on type, I can select my actual. Now you can see there's a new column here, right? The new columns that we created. So I'm going to go ahead and click on item type here. Uh, and then I have to go to my income account, select income account. So now I'm just mapping how QuickBooks is supposed to read this information. So my expense cost to goods sold account, we called it cost account. And the inventory account, we just call it inventory account. If that should be enough. Let's just go ahead and give it a try. So we'll click on save and then we'll click on preview. I'd like to preview first, kind of give me a general idea of the type of information that is going to be saved. Okay, so it looks like we're ready to import. Now, before we import, I want to double check that the accounts that we set up for the items are in my chart of accounts, actually. So I have to be very careful of trying to import an item list that doesn't have uh, the correct accounts in there. So I'm going to go into my chart of accounts here, and I want to double check that I do have, in fact, a uh, an account called sales, an account called uh, whatever it's supposed to be, right? So I'm going to go into account new and then I'll click on income and then we'll go ahead and put here sales. Just make it all caps here. So I want to make sure that there's a, an account called sales and then I want to make sure there's an account called cost of goods sold. Okay, and they're categorized correctly in this case. And I also want to make sure there's one called inventory asset. The problem is if I don't do this uh, beforehand, when I try to do an import, I'm going to get an error that uh, the accounts that are associated with these items don't exist. So I want to make sure that all these accounts, and just for, for some reference, let me open up the Excel file here again so, so we know exactly what we're talking about here. We're talking about the each account that we assign to each item. So we told it that our sales account is called sales and a cost of goods sold account is called cost of goods sold and inventory is called inventory asset. That was a very important piece. I had to double check that that was there. Um, caps don't matter in this case. So if it's a lowercase or uppercase, it doesn't matter. So I'll go ahead and hit save and close. And now let's go ahead and attempt to do that import again. So I'm going to go to utilities, import Excel, and then click on advanced import. And uh, everything should be saved exactly as it's supposed to. I'll hit preview to kind of check it before we go. Uh, and then it looks like everything's okay. The preview rendered, it looks like a pretty good preview. So I'm going to go ahead and click on import. So it'll give me a warning about uh, uh, you make sure that you do a backup before you import. So make sure we're aware of that. And I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And usually it will take a minute or less. Like in this case, it did it in seconds. So I'm going to go into my item list here just to kind of check how, how it did it. And there's my entire item list. If I double click on any of these, we'll see exactly how the information came in. So here comes the fun part. Uh, let's We already imported. Let's say later on in the future, we want to make some massive changes to this uh, file. And we want to uh, change the descriptions or change the prices. So I'll kind of show you how, how to do that. It's kind of around the same function here. As long as the item names don't change, uh, this will work just fine. So let me open the original spreadsheet here. And um, the original spreadsheet contains the special descriptions that we did. So let's say that uh, what what we really want I is- I want to change uh, the sales price. Let's say that for whatever reason, <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to do a formula where uh, the cost has to be multiplied times 1.4, uh, whatever it is, and that gives me my new sales price. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the sales price, put equals the cost times 1.4, right? Whatever it happens to be. <clears throat> and then I'll go ahead and duplicate this information. So now I massively change my sale price to be 40% uh, uh, markup over my cost. So I did two major changes here. I changed the description uh, to add those uh, line breaks. 
and then I changed my sales price. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that spreadsheet. And it's important that you keep the spreadsheet kind of uh, forever because um, in the future you may uh, want to make massive changes to your item list and you may wanna have that spreadsheet handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow the same technique. I'll go to File, Utilities, Import, Excel Files. And then I'll click on Advanced Import. And then we'll load up that uh, Excel file again, right? That doesn't change, the same exact Excel file. And the mapping stays the same, right? So because uh, it's going to work off the same mapping. So I don't have to touch the mapping. I don't have to touch this. Once I imported the file once and the Excel file maintains its original integrity with all the columns, um, after I do the update, all I have to do is just pretty much load it in here. So I'm going to click on preview uh, just to kind of make sure that we, let me just select the sheet here. So I'm going to click on preview just to kind of get an idea of uh, how the information is coming in. And then I can actually see it uh, exactly very clear uh, you know, how with the new prices and the new costs and all that stuff. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and then click on import. Now, this is the key element. This is the, the most important thing. It's actually telling you that I already have other item names with, with, uh, with that information in the system. So if I pick this first option that says keep existing data, it would actually not import anything. Uh, and here it says, the second option says replace existing data, ignoring the blank fields. And the next one says uh, replace existing data, including blank fields. So I typically just ignore blank fields and click on replace existing data. That way, anything that hasn't changed, it won't really touch and it will just kind of focus on the new information. So I'll go ahead and click on apply to all and then hit okay. And then when I double click on the actual item, I actually get to see my new updated price. Now the update works for, for cost, for account, for description, for uh, manufacturer's part number. The update works for everything in this field except for uh, the item name. The item name cannot be changed uh, this way and the quantity on hand can, can also not, uh, cannot be changed this way.